Alrighty guys, what's going on? Linky here. And in today's video, we are now in June. And with that, we are going to be discussing when we're going to see Pokemon news. Now, last week, we got the official trailer reveal-ish thing of the release dates for Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl and for Legends Arceus. And it created quite a bit of uh, discussion in the Pokemon community, to, to put it mildly. But now we're entering June, a month where we're expected to get a ton of Nintendo news. So the big question is, are we going to get Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl and Legends Arceus footage in a Pokemon Direct, a Pokemon Presents, or are we going to see it in Nintendo's big E3 show, or are they just going to randomly drop a trailer on us some Monday or Wednesday morning? Let's discuss it. Now, before we get into the rest of the video, I just want to mention that a lot of you guys who are watching these videos, hopefully enjoying them, obviously, aren't actually subscribed to the channel now. Subscribing does a ton. It does a ton to support me. It does a ton to keep these videos coming. And it's just really awesome to see you guys' support. We've been growing really fast recently, and I only have you guys to thank for it. So if you're not subscribed, please be sure to hit that red button down below. And let's jump right into the rest of the topic. Every single year when we get Pokemon game announcements, which is pretty much becoming a yearly thing over the last five years, we get some kind of big video reveal, a ton of information shown off in June. Typically, this information comes close to E3, but recently, the Pokemon company has been opting to reveal the information on their own in a Pokemon Direct, or what they're now being branded as, Pokemon Presents. Now, we don't know fully yet if we're going to be getting a Pokemon Presents close to E3, which would be in the next two weeks, or if Nintendo is going to try to get Game Freak and the Pokemon Company to let them reveal some of that information at their E3 show. And I think a lot of that largely depends on what Nintendo themselves have to show at E3. A couple weeks ago, I put out a video talking about some of my expectations for Nintendo's E3 this year, and obviously when we get closer, I'm going to cover some of that on the channel. We're going to talk about whatever Zelda news we might get, Metroid news, Pokemon news, Mario news, all of those things. Typically, we get some kind of trailer in these Nintendo E3 events for Pokemon. The biggest thing that I can recall is back in 2014 when Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire were being revealed, we got a pretty big significant trailer during Nintendo's E3 show. I want to say that it was near the end of the show, and it was actually a, a real-life trailer. There were these uh, people exploring a cave, and it was it was the cave that you could find in Duford Town, and then it transitioned into actual gameplay. And that was what we got from E3 that year. I want to say that's where we got some teases for soaring or some kind of feature with Latios and Latias in those games, but don't quote me on that. It's 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 been a couple years. That's the big question, is when are we going to see this footage and what are we going to see? They've already thrown us a curveball, if you guys didn't know. Last week we got the official release dates revealed for the games. We got November 19th for Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, and we got January 28th, I believe, for Legends Arceus. We know the release dates. That's something that is now taken from Nintendo and the Pokemon Company. It's something that they can no longer talk about. which breeds a lot of questions. Are we, what are we going to be seeing? Are we going to be seeing a gameplay blowout for Legends Arceus? Are we going to be seeing a trailer for Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl that shows the return or the addition of some new feature? There's a lot of different ways that this could be handled. And if I had to give my ideal scenario, I think it would behoove the Pokemon company to mold it into Nintendo's E3. Now, this is something that admittedly I say pretty much every single year. I don't necessarily agree with the Pokemon company's decision to have their own event. I understand that it gets more eyeballs on their game. I understand that from Nintendo's perspective, you get two big events focusing on Nintendo IPs within a couple weeks, and that's a lot of engagement for Nintendo. That's a lot of focus on their stuff. But I think specifically for Legends Arceus, it would be really important to show off a trailer during E3. Make it a big deal. Make it an event. This is a game that has a lot of high expectations by fans, and as we've seen in the last week, it also has a lot of doubts. The release date led a lot of people down the path of questioning Game Freak a bit. The game looked a little rough when it was first revealed. Nobody denies that. So people are wondering, we're getting this game released less than a year from when it was announced. Legends Arceus and Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl got announced at the end of February. And in January of the following year, we're getting this game. 
there's a lot of questions to be answered and a big trailer overviewing some of the things that we have not yet seen from this game I think would do a lot to quell those fears in a lot of people. Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl on the other hand could use just a trailer drop. This is something that we've seen Pokemon do with previous games in Sun and Moon almost every two weeks during the summer uh, leading up to its release in 2016. It felt like we were getting a trailer, and in those trailers we were getting new Pokemon revealed, we were getting new mechanics or new characters in the Alola region, we were getting whole towns and places and locations in the game revealed to us. This is also how they went about showing us Alolan forms. Every two weeks we'd see one or two new ones and they'd show off some of the gameplay of them in battle. This is the approach that they could take with Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. Start to show us more areas of the game. I would love to see Candelave City, Sunnyshore City, Veilstone City, Snowpoint City, any of these locations more or for the first time. We haven't seen them yet in this new art style. We haven't seen them with this new lighting engine. This would do a ton, and I think that they should focus that on its own trailer. Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl is popular. If you look at, if you were able to see my channel metrics, you would know that Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl are the games that most people are most interested in when they come to my channel. It's lesser for Legends. So I think they need to use E3's Nintendo event for Legends, and we need to see a trailer drop for Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. Now, this could be dropped the day before E3. This could be dropped this coming week, even though that would throw my video plans. Uh, that would definitely throw a wrench into my video plans. There's a lot of things that they can do here, and it's going to be really curious to see how Game Freak chooses to do this. Of course, following E3, we then have months of reveals and information to be dropped for us. And this is where, and I've mentioned this in a couple of videos, the strategy by Game Freak and the Pokemon company is going to be really interesting. They're marketing two distinct titles. These are very different games. Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl are very simple, um, basically paint by numbers uh, remakes. We know what we're getting. We pretty much know exactly what we're going to see. We know the story of the game. We know the features of the game because a lot of it is just going to be carried over from the originals. With Legends Arceus, this is all new. We don't know how in-depth it is. How much can the, can the player character interact with the overworld? How varied are the actions and movements and abilities of Pokemon? How varied is the environments in which we can find these Pokemon? Are certain ones going to appear in different ones at different times? Is there going to be... Uh, level progression and level capping so for example you can go out as far as you want but if you're such a low level it doesn't really impact you but as you get higher leveled the wild pokemon also increase in level there's a lot of questions are there going to be rigid restrictions of where you can go and where you can travel and if you if there are restrictions how do you overcome them is it going to be a certain item that you can use maybe some kind of climbing gear some kind of water surfing gear what could it be? An environment that maybe you can't traverse yet. Maybe there's a river you can't get across and you require to build a bridge. There's a lot of things that they could do to cap player movement. And with an open world game, how you handle player movement is critical. That's a lot of information that we don't know about yet, which is why I think a big E3 reveal would do a ton to help Pokemon. The other thing that we're not totally aware of yet is what the presence of Nintendo Treehouse is going to be at this event. In previous years, Sun and Moon, I go back to again. Once the E3 show ended, Nintendo Treehouse is basically a live stream where Nintendo employees show off gameplay of various games and you get to see some in-depth coverage of them. They'll also sometimes have developers on to talk about the game as well. This is what happened with Sun and Moon. If Treehouse is happening digitally this year, could we see some gameplay for one of these games shown off? Could we see a nice meaty chunk of 20 to 25 minutes of just them playing through one of these games? And if we do see that, which of them will they pick? This is the central question to this release cycle. How are they going to juggle and handle these two games? Because as I mentioned earlier, they are different and they're going to have to be handled differently. We can't just get the exact same release cycle plan for both because we're going to have an extra two months of release and reveal information after Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl up to Legends Arceus. So it's going to be fascinating. With that being said, I would love to know what you guys think. Are we going to see a Pokemon Presents before E3? Or are we going to see it all wrapped up into one? Are we going to see something crazy thrown into the mix if we see a Switch Pro reveal? That's something that a lot of leakers last week said could come any day and that Nintendo might announce it before their show. If that happens, Legends Arceus and the discussion surrounding that game gets a lot more interesting because you would have to imagine that on the Switch Pro, it's going to be a much better performing game. With that being said, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please be sure to leave a like. And as I mentioned before, make sure you're subscribed if you're not already. 
I have been Linky, and we'll see you all in the next video. Peace out.